We're out on the range today, so you might so bear with the sound of uh, gunshots in the background. No, we don't hate on Paul Harrell. <laughs> hey, you hear a lot of things out there about all these gimmicky rounds, and you know over the years we've tested a lot of those out here. All kinds of rounds that are supposed to do magical things, and they'll bring down Tyrannosaurus Rexes and spacecraft from the air. But um, they're all there is is trying to do is milk you out of your money, right? They're, separate, they're trying to separate fools from their money. And one of the ones we're going to test today makes the wild claim that it is armor-piercing and incendiary. Now, that's Latin for it causes fires. So what we're going to do is send this, shoot this over at a steel target. We've got some aluminum plates. We've got an AR-500 steel target downrange. We're going to see if it's either armor-piercing or incendiary. Or both. Or both. <laughs> I have my doubts, folks. Shut up, Jeff. Put you Put your comments down below before you watch this. Let us know if you think they're going to work or not work. You can come back and edit it later and say that you were wrong. But let's give these things a try through the towel plater gun. And we're going to see if they will actually punch through steel. The company that makes them claims that they will punch through two car doors, folks. I don't know what country they're in where they build cars, but cars are not armored. Uh, most cars are not armored. Uh, my 22 rifle will punch through uh, two car doors on a good day. So uh, let's give them a round, uh, give them a try against some actual steel and see how they do. Aiming at the red dot. We got a, a cigarette lighter there to see if the, the incendiary will ignite it. Ooh, those are incendiary remarks. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Oh my, that had some thump. Well, it, um, was well, seem to be accurate. We'll give him that. That big splatter right there, would you say oh. we cut through the red tape? Oh. Bad. Man, that's good. Bad. So, Jeff's telling me, looking at the high-speed camera, that they were, in fact, incendiary. We did see some sparks off of them. However, this is a... It's an actual piece of armor, and there's not even a divot there. Obviously, nothing came through the back. Nothing. Mm. So, they were not armor-piercing, at least on this piece. Let's try dialing it down and see if they'll pierce some non-armor items. Okay. Next up, this uh, lovely little sheet of aluminium, donated generously by Ray of Visalia. He uh, met up with me the other day and gave me a whole box full of different thicknesses of uh, aluminum plates that you'll see in uh, future videos but what would you say the width of that thing is I think it's 3 8 that's what I was gonna say too 3 8 yeah that's like a 3 over an 8 that's so, like uh, 10 millimeters sure let's take a look and see if that armor piercing slug will pierce aluminum Pierce it. It's not really armor or anything, but no, this is not armor. In fact, it's aluminum. If you're wearing aluminum armor, you're doing it wrong, folks. But uh, man, that slug tore through there like uh, like Lizzo tearing through a box of Twinkies. I don't know who and that is. You don't know who Lizzo is? I thought you had her Christmas album. I never heard of him or her or whatever. Something about check your nails. Okay. Feeling good as hell or something. Okay. Anyway, chunk right through there and look. Kinda, okay, hey, kind of see how I'll, I'll give them credit. It it went through that. So don't wear rifle plates made out of aluminum. It's a little thicker. Woo, this one's thicker. It's quite heavy. Big chunk of al aluminum. Jeff says it's one inch, but I was told that an inch is this long. <laughs> so anyway, let's see if it'll it'll bore itself right through this aluminum, which has a little aluminum hair. Woo. Uh, no armor piercing, huh? No, didn't even make it through this six inches of uh, <laughs> aluminum block. Made a nice little divot there, kind of like the one we see in the lead plate often, but fairly shallow. Yeah. Consistently low, I believe. I think they've all been hitting a little low. Yeah, it was just a little this low, one. little right. Yeah, this one punched a little right. Okay, so Ray from Visalia also donated these hard drives. He said he was very disappointed in these things. The WD black five terabytes that's a lot of terabytes folks 
he was very disappointed in these. They uh, they crapped the bed on him, so he wanted to make sure that they met a untimely demise out here. So let's go ahead and try those rounds against Ray's five terabyte hard drives. WD Black, same makers as WD Forty, folks. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. If we put right through there, we knocked all five terabytes out the back. They went flying out in the grass somewhere. We'll pick those up later. How many platters are in that thing? Wow. It's heavy. It's a lot heavier than most hard drives. The 50s singing group? Yeah. The platters? Yeah. It uh, plowed right through that thing like Taylor Swift plows through boyfriends. <laughs> right through the middle. Wow. That's copyrighted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it, yeah, gives, it gives people an idea of the size of the hole, okay? But, <laughs> They'll understand why you do that. It's not about the size of the hole, Jeff. It's about the quality. <laughs> By the way, folks, that's some sharp stuff. I'm going to uh, refrain from doing that any further. <laughs> yeah. Not only the fiberglass here, but those are like little razor blades stacked up there. So yeah, that's, maybe don't do that at home. Jeff thinks they're called platters. I think that, yeah, or disc. disc I, I think they're called yeah. um, round flippy things. Okay. That's the scientific term. I, there's got to be a technical term for this. Jeff, I, I don't know if you noticed, I'm a scientist. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm a radiation, what is it, radiation protection? Yeah, yeah. I can't even remember. So for safety. Don't question my science. <laughs> how can we not, how can we have almost forgotten the lead plate? I don't know, because it was in my pocket this whole time. And <laughs> you're dragging me down, Bruce. Okay. <laughs> What are you aiming for? Uh, the black dot. On the black top. dot, okay. A couple inches off. Low again. Low again. It was kind of consistent, you know. Consistent you get an idea low. of its grouping that way. Yep, and made a nice deep crater in there, just about like this uh, piece over here. I don't think. Okay. A little bit of a bulge and a crack on the back. Yeah, okay, it's respectable. Did not make it through. So if your car door is made out of lead plates like this, you'll be good to go. It will actually stop this round. <laughs> but if your car door is made out of car, it's not going to do anything. It'll punch right through. First of all, let's take a closer look at what's inside the Pericles Technologies <clears throat> uh, API slug. It's basically a Lyman 525 Diablo shaped slug that they drilled a hole into on the nose. Honestly, I was expecting something a little more exotic. What is that material that they put inside there? It appears to be three, yes, ferrocerium lighter flints. Apparently, they've been watching some of our old videos. In test number one, the projectile actually flew very stable, and it was pretty darn accurate. Now, in real time, we could not see the sparks coming off there at all. We probably could have seen it at night, but we can only see it with the high-speed camera in this case. Now one thing that really stands out here is that the plastic wad is completely shredded. In test number two, nothing seems to be going right. Again, the plastic wad is completely torn apart, but the projectile in this case is flying at about a 45 degree angle. Now we do see a, a small flash on impact. That's actually the aluminum oxide detonating, not the incendiary ferrocerium flints sparking. Upon closer examination of the projectile, we could see that the normally hollow base is packed full of wadding material, just shoved full of plastic. In test number three, the projectile is at a different angle and it gives us a really big clue of what's going wrong here. We see the aluminum oxide flash, but we also see some of the ferrocerium sparking in this shot at least. It really makes me wonder if they even tested these out before they started selling them. Now if we take a closer look at the slug, we can see that it's badly distorted and bent. This is what it looked like originally. It no longer has its Diablo shape, the center of gravity has changed, the entire slug is compressed, it's a mess. In test number four, it doesn't get any better. Still flying sideways, no sparks at all this time. Accuracy was not bad, but when the thing's going sideways, it's not going to function like they intended to with the sparks and all that. All these tests were done at 20 yards with a cylinder bore. No choke. Upon closer examination, we can see that the projectile is almost unrecognizable from its original shape. 
the thin soft lead skirt is just shoved into the nose. In test number five, uh, again we see the same thing going on. Flying sideways, badly damaged uh, projectile, the plastic wad is completely shredded up, and no spark from the ferrocerium. This type of projectile is basically an oversized 69 caliber air rifle pellet. But the enormous barrel pressures don't act directly against the pellet, but have to go through this plastic wad. With nearly 12,000 PSI supported only by this very thin, narrow rim, things get really bad if you don't have good support. With all that energy being pushed up that very thin skirt, well, you saw what happened. The solution is actually very simple. Just fill that hollow cavity with something, in this case, compressed tissue. By doing this, we now have 100% support. The thin skirt is now relieved from carrying all that burden as the energy is now distributed evenly across the inside of that pellet and into the top of it. This protects the plastic wad from being shredded apart. The Sabo functions the way it's supposed to function, keeping it centered in the barrel, and it prevents the slug from compressing under its own weight during that split second of acceleration. And that, folks, is the right way of launching a Diablo slug. Caught me right here while I was working out with these dumbbell rounds. 997. So these are the dumbbell rounds, little steel round. You've probably seen these before. Tim at the Ballistic Machinist whittled these things out of pure steel. A precision CNC made. They uh, are fantastic. Yeah, these are great little rounds. So let's give these a try against the lead plate and through that one inch aluminum and see if uh, how they compare. They're not even marketed as armor piercing, by the way. Um, I bet but they are the real McCoy. They're, they're fast and they're steel, so. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Superman. <laughs> Ready. Oh, Tim. Right in the pancreas. So look at Tim's round here. All steel round burrowed itself in there deeper than the armor piercing round and made more of a flash <laughs> than the incendiary round. The, the incendiary round didn't flash at all when it hit the lead plate. One of the big surprises here is that the all-steel slug created more sparks hitting the lead plate than the so-called API round. Instead of uh, Sabo, these use two plastic rifling bands which also discard upon leaving the barrel. You can really tell that Tim did his research when he developed these and did a lot of testing to make these things so accurate. I think maybe it's Latin for does not make the flash. And then look here on the back. Okay. Tim's round almost, almost made it through. That's a... Really similar uh, spalling. We call that spalling. Oh. Yeah. So fancy with your Latin. Yeah. Spalling. But look at that. Wow. It embedded itself in there. Jeez. Very impressive. Okay, now what about that aluminum plate? Let's uh, let's see. What do you think, folks? You think it's going to punch through that? Uh, that's, that's tough. That's tough stuff. The six-inch aluminum plate, you think? Let's give it a try. I am ready. All right, here we go. Top dot. Ooh, listen to that thing. Hey. So, dead on accurate. Uh, punched a little bit deeper, about twice as deep as the armor piercing. Nowhere close to coming through that thing, but... And here's what's cool. Look at the perfect roundness of that hole. Here's the slug that you guys saw floating back out of there. It's uh, hot. The tail end of it or something. I mean, it hot. is... It, it, it's so it got so hot I can feel the, the steel is discolored. I'm glad I have no feeling from the eyelids down because <laughs> that thing is hot. Oh that's nuts. But you can see it kind of collapsed in there a perfect little round. Slide. I don't know where the rest of it went. It's like a dime. Yeah. But pink. Look at that. Where'd the rest of, I mean this the projectile is an yeah. inch and a half long. Yeah, it looks like a, a and solid belt. steel. So <clears throat> It probably just melted in the atmosphere. <laughs> well, actually, I saw a, a you know huge what? flash on that one. If you take a look at the side of this, there are two pieces to that. Could that have collapsed in on itself? No. Well, we could weigh it. Front? I mean, it, it started out at 500 grains, and I, and I think that that's like... That feels like about 497. <laughs> okay. I don't know. If you take, take away it, the Coriolis it, effect. <laughs> Jeff, I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> I am a scientist. Uh, because I have this jacket. Okay, so, uh, doc, you, you are science. radiation protected. <laughs> <laughs> or something, or I listen to the radio. Yeah. There are very clearly though, there's a back round piece here, and I can get my thumbnail in there. I mean, there's 
it's almost like there's two pieces that I don't know. That's it's a mystery. Uh, well, I'll, I'll look around. It's I, a I'll mystery bet. that science will never solve. <laughs> yes. Whew, it's starting to cool off a little bit. But look at the, yeah, look at the burn marks. That is when when things when steel discolors, it turns blue and yellow and orange. And you said it made a flash. A, a huge flash. The, I don't think the in the the quote armor piercing incendiary even flashed at all when it hit the aluminum plate. So it's not incendiary or armor piercing is what you're trying to tell me? Well, as seen on TV, I, I'll let people decide for themselves. Ooh, you decide. You decide. There you go. All right, folks. There it is. We compared them. Uh, we compared them side by side. Two different targets. Two different rounds. Um, I still. Well, there is more than two different targets. I mean, two targets compared. Oh, there you go. There lead, you go. Lead versus lead and aluminum. One inch, six inch aluminum. Six inch aluminum versus six inch aluminum. It, it, it gave me an opportunity to test more of Tim's uh, dumbbell slugs, you know, which are yeah. just fantastic. They're badass. Yeah. Ching going. I heard Richard Ryan might be, he, he's, he bought some of those, and he's going to do something with them. I don't know, from Rated RR or Full Mag? Full Mag, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he does that. He emails me, then, slow, like, slow I'll, 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 here's the thing, he'll, he'll email me, ask me a question, and I'll reply to him that day. And then, like, two weeks later, he'll email me again. Richard. It's like, come on, dude. Well, he's busy watching movies with all of the Special Forces boys over oh, on the Black Rifle Coffee channel. That's right. Which is a good channel. I want some of that coffee, though. I'll get you some. <laughs> that's a good channel. It's got a lot of interesting videos over there that's a crack up to laugh at. It's nothing like the OG's Danger Show. Link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> come over and visit me on OG's Danger Show. No, but the uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company channel is hilarious. And of course, full mag Richard Ryan. He's uh, he's got a lot of. He's one. He's one of the YouTubers I've never met. I've only. I think I talked to him on the phone, emailed him and stuff. He's Pretty got, nice guy. Very hyperactive. Yeah. You know, very he's into. He's got stuff. two or three thousand uh, subscribers, right? He does. Yeah, I think so, he's up to like thirty-five hundred or something now. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's, he's struggling. He's struggling. Yeah. Go take a look at his subscribership. <laughs> All right, folks. You guys be safe out there. Stay Corona free, and uh, we will see you on the next one. One of the reasons why we put the dumbbell round against the Pericles API round is because they cost about the same. If you're going to spend $4.50 or $5 a round, it better deliver the goods. Now remember, the high-speed camera does not lie. You saw exactly what happened with your own eyes. We want to thank our Patreon supporters, also our channel members. I think uh, Patreon's a little better deal for most people because you can donate just a dollar. It's not a, a big sacrifice, but it all adds up and it helps us create better content. My biggest gripe with the channel membership is that YouTube gets 30% right off the top. We do the work, they take 30%. That's almost as bad as the government. Who also take their cut? And that leaves us with enough money to buy that fancy top ramen. And it's no problem if you can't afford to support the channel. We always appreciate your kind comments, ideas, and just encouragement. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.